Whoa, whoa. Ugh. Finally here. I'm a bit late. There was a huge monsoon outside, but I I survived it. Uh, welcome to live stream. Or if you're watching on YouTube, welcome to recorded live stream of analyzing a situation. And this was supposed to be part of PLO order, hand review thing, but I decided let's go public, let's post it on YouTube so everyone can see what we have on PLO order. So <clears throat> PLO order is pretty much a community. And if you're a member of PLO order, it means you have subbed to this channel. So if you make a sub, you become a member of order and, and you can find, just use the comment order to find out what you can expect. You will get free strategy videos and your hands analyzed and this is a hand posted there on the Discord by the member of PL Order and I'm going to analyze it's actually a pretty interesting spot. I'm a bit surprised by the results. But let's let's start to tackle what we have here today. So it's a spot where Hero has double the kings on the small blind. And there's it's seven handed. I have no idea where this is played. It makes things a bit trickier because no one has seven handed sims. But we we will manage. Limper, isolation race, cold call from the cutoff. Hero decides to tree bet. And definitely agree. And two players go. We had sixty-two dollars or big lines on the pot and we are effectively with 77 big lines deep so slightly more than SPR1 and we hit over pair with an king high flush draw blocking ace king king nine straights <clears throat> and the question is what should we do here and uh, my initial thought was just SPR1 Flopping king high flush draw. Let's get it in. And then there were some comments about different lines, bet folding, bet calling. Should we bet small? Should we put? And the more you think about the situation, the more complicated it gets. And Hero decides to put here. There's the raise. And of course we kill. I haven't even looked further, so I have no idea what opponent has. And that's not important what he has. The important is what in the world do we do here? Would you check phone? Would you just shove? Is there any difference? And it would be easy to justify a shove. And I'm very confident that in the long run versus actual opponents it probably is plus EV but I haven't checked the situation on poker twos that would give some kind of idea whether it's even close so I might be might be surprised second time by this hand but what Solomar does and this is the flop Queen check then in a situation where there has been open and cold call, tree bed, call, call. And tree bed is standard, king, king, five, six, double suited. So the squeeze was standard. I checked, that's the first thing I checked that do we squeeze king, king, five, six, double suited? And we do. And in, in small state environment. But of course we don't have, I mean, you can create the exact situation with Solver because it's seven handed and you teach imps. And I'm quite sure there isn't, there isn't a sim for that. And when you teach imps as a short stack, he's not limp in Solver range. So what I mean, did is I treated this as you teach range because I think his opening range or isolation range there was really pretty, it's pretty much really tied around 18% UTG range. And then cut off cold call range, button squeezing, uh, small blind squeezing range, and then they call. 
So if they play with sober ranges, the actual ranges on the flop are very narrow. Because the code calling range is, is really small. And our squeezing range is, is damn tight. It's like 2.4% or something. So everyone operates with really narrow ranges. But we can see that on this flop, let me see if I can. And now we have that. We have that. Let me just put it you know, down so you can see. So I, I zoomed a little. Uh, first thing is that on this flop, the small blind squeezing range checks 70% of hands, which is quite a lot. And it bets small only 2.6% and it bots 27. So my simplification would be that we don't have small sizing on this board unless we have it totally crushed. And, and the weird thing is that it pretty much squeezes with aces and the straight. But there are like straight with uh, ace 998. Uh, let me see. There it is. It's weird that that hand is actually in our small blind squeezing range versus two people. Wouldn't cross my mind to squeeze there, ace 997 or ace 998, sorry. But yeah, it is there. Weird hand. There's also some super weirdness. I, where did I see triple aces? There it is. Uh, there. Uh, ace, 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 jack. And that's a bit small. Fold to a raise. But overall, I, I would make a simplification that we either check or put. And now when we go to the actual hands, when we have king, king, six, five, then we can see that it puts it if it has the backdoor flush draw. So if it has clubs and spades, uh, sorry there, if it has clubs and spades, then it's going to be put. But if it doesn't, like it has only the club draw, which we have, it's always a check. <laughs> and the thing here is solver knows exactly opponent's range and it knows exactly opponent tendencies, uh, I mean strategies. So solver knows exactly how opponent play and the opponent knows exactly how the small blind plays here. So solver knows everything. And then it picks the hands according to EV. And now the question is, if we check, do we check fold or check call? And now I'm, I'm kind of, I just realized that I should make a sim where we force the small blind to put this hand and see what's the EV, how much the EV drops if we just put it. Because you can see that with the backdoor flush draw, the EV of a shove is, is quite a lot. 30,000 mini chips. And then when we just check, it's 21, 22. And the back door itself doesn't add up with it that much. So I'm supposing that Solver decides to check this hand to have some sort of balance. But if we could see what's the EV of a shove of King King 65 with just the gloves. If the EV was something around 20,000 or something, then you could easily just shove it and be happy about it. But Solver decides to actually check this hand. And if we say that we check and then one player pots and the other folds, now we can see that King King 6 5 with just the gloves is a check call with EV of 2.6 thousand. But if we go back a little and both wires shove, which would mean that actually we need less equity to stack off, 
Now the surprising thing is that these hands check fold. And Solomon knows exactly how often opponents have better made hand and better flush draw. So probably when two people go all in, there's really high chance that either one has and not flush draw, which I'm not so sure about in actual real life, but Solomon knows exactly how opponents play. It doesn't really matter actually Uh, of course, it actually matters because we're out of position. So if the third player or the second player, which was the UTG, if he checks and button decides to shove, then there's king, king, six, five, which just collapses a check fold. So sober strategy on this flop with this exact hand of king, king, six, five would be... Uh, that's the one seems here's the right one would be to check and call if one player goes all in and the other one folds or just check fold if both go all in or the button goes all in and I'm a, I'm a bit surprised that even here when it's check check pot even now king king six five doesn't become plus EV, which is, which is quite weird. With the back of last draw, it just get it in. But that's kind of weird. Then I thought, okay, Sober assumes that everyone plays Sober pre range. So they fold quite a lot to small blind quiz. So what if we do another sim? where no one folds the three bets. So now the flop ranges are a bit tighter. And what we can see is, it's really it's not lower. We check 62%, we bet small 6.6. So now we actually bet small slightly more. Uh, and we put 31. So the overall strategy doesn't change that much. I still wouldn't start to make small bets because it's super hard to know the balance. But does anything change when we have the King King 6 5? And now we actually have a lot more kings in our range. Remember in the first, previous hand, I mean here, uh, back, 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 there's only five different combinations of king king six five that we go to the flop now on the second sim we have this many and the reason is our squeezing range changes when we know that opponents never fold to three bet so we squeeze more king king six five combinations but we only put the double suited ones and check everything. If the UTG goes all in, button folds, it's called. There's actually <laughs> weird 0.1% that we do something else. We don't even have the action for that hand. But yeah, pretty much we call that one all in. If button shoves, we can see that it becomes fold. So exactly same strategy. If button bets, but we fold. So actually the strategy with this exact hand doesn't change that much. It actually doesn't change at all. And I'm not even going to see what we do versus small bets. Because that's super rare oh we could see because we have the option uh what if there comes all right now now, now things can messy so if the utg needs for one third and button folds then with king king six five we have pretty much a lot of options and with the exact hand we have three options mixed strategy 
of just calling very low frequency 1.2, uh, raising small is actually an option, but the shove. So I would just shove here. If bottom bed small, now it becomes call King King six five. Mixed strategy, but I, I would never fold here. If we call, there's a shove, shove. It actually would fold. Wow. With this kind of odds, I have to pay 45 BBs into the pot of zillion BBs. King Queen 6 5 is a fold. Super weird. So now we know solver strategy. And then the question is should we actually play that way? Depending on the opponents. And that's why I wanted. To use Pokerjuice Cloud, two reasons, or three reasons. One, to get an answer. Two, to show you Pokerjuice Cloud, because it's a new app. And third, to learn how to use it myself. So it's win-win-win situation. Nothing bad, only upsides. So I'm going to take this replayer there, so we can create the hand. And we are the small blind. And we need three players to join the hand. And first we make a call. Then cutoff, which is originally the next one in the hand, is not cutoff, but we define his range. And how much did he raise? Uh, uh, uh. The 4.5, yes. Uh, I know that Mastermind, they have the prefab helper on Discord, which is quite handy. You just, they, they have a Discord bot in, in their Mastermind uh, server that you just type your position and the hand and it tells you the strategy. Pretty much the same as PLO Matrix. Uh, mostly based on the same themes anyway. So yeah, they have it. And then they have the PLO Trainer standalone tool that you can practice different prefab situations and yeah. So they do have, so they, it's pretty much the same as PLO Matrix and, and a lot more. But PLO Matrix is easy and graphically it's, it's quite nice. And with PLO Matrix, the good thing is that when you have the whole grid you can see the thresholds, so upsides and downsides. But yeah, Mastermind has preflop too. So for individual hands, you can get the same info as on PLO Matrix. Uh, then we have a button that code calls and small blinds squeezes. There's a fold, fold, call and button calls and then comes the flop which is we jack then was it that way yes boom and now we want to know what do we do on the small blind so that's that's pretty much how we create a hand in poker choose and you can see that it took like one one minute, two minutes to create it from the scratch based on the hand history we have. So even if it doesn't support all the sites hand histories, it's very easy to create one here. So now we need to define some ranges. And he raises that imper We could say that 15 or 20, let's say 20. We don't have 18%, which would be GTO-ish, but the effect on the overall outcome, whether it's 18 or 20, is very minimal. It doesn't affect. The cold coin range is, is a lot harder. Let me see, uh, I 
can see the ranges here, all right? But the real life calling ranges are very different than what Solberg does. So we have to make some kind of compromises. And we would say definitely that he would raise uh, around 5%, so we say that 3 bet 6% in position. That would be his raising range. But he's not doing that, he's calling. But when we do this, we define the range he would raise with. So it's excluded from his calling range. And I, I would say the calling range is probably quite tight, let's say 15%. Some people call a lot. And the beauty of Booker Choose Cloud is that we can come back in a bit and see does it even affect the outcome whether he calls wider or not. And then we have this with the pencil. We don't have a pencil here. What? Oh, I have to make it big. All right. So there's no pencil for this player here. It doesn't scale perfectly. Have to give feedback there. So if you make the window smaller, you can edit all. So this is King 5. Can we move this one? No. Uh, if I make this, you can see that it is King King 6 5. Can we put it like slightly there? All right, now the King Queen 5 is there. And then he folds, and now does he call with everything? I say that he would raise pocket daisies. That's pretty straightforward way to define a four bedding range. But he decides to call and I would say that in real life people overcall the squeezes like in position he's not folding almost anything. So let's start with that he doesn't fold anything. And then same here we first define that he would raise pocket aces but now he decides to call with everything else. And now if you're wondering, shouldn't he forbid ace king king and so on, he might, if you estimate that he might do it, you can change the range or you can start with this one and come back, change the range to a bit wider, see how it affects the outcome and so on. So, now we need to create two different branches on the game tree. One is where we put and keep opponent ranges, and one where we check and keep opponent's actions. And probably when we check, there's again two different branches, and that's how the game tree is built. So we have bedding range and checking range. Or, or action, no range, because we have actual hand. If we decide to put, then I, I pretty much think that the only option is to raise or fold. And now the question is, what kind of range would the UDG shove here? And now we can go to this pretty much, where's the flush draw? Any not flush draw. And now it includes all the set straights, two pairs with not flush draw. Any hand with not flush draw is a shove there, in, in my opinion, quite easily. Then another thing that he would probably shove is 
to pair an open ender. If you disagree, then just say in the chat what you think is his range. But we have to start with something. So to pair an open ender. Definitely. And you can have wraps there. The only open ender is Queen 9, Jack 9, then 9 type of hand. Or Ace, Ace, then 8 type of hand. <laughs> but let's start with that. He shoves not flush draw and then two pair. Who's open ender? Two pair of penner and open. With open and drop banner, and then he would definitely shove any set. Or oh, better. So now it includes the straights too. And when it says, oh, you don't see the orange box, but it says actions do not add to 100%, it means the game tree is not finished. So well, now we have his raising range, and he would. We need to give them the folding option so we can create the game tree. And then now it gets a bit complicated because we have to finish all the different branches on the game tree to get the EV. And that's why three way pots become quite complicated. Now it's easy, it's SPR1, so the action probably ends on the flop most likely. So if we had deeper stacks then the game tree would get really complicated. Because let's say on the flop we have uh, this way two branches on the game tree. Bet, check. If we bet then there would be <laughs> two or three more branches and each one of those would create different turn situation and each of those turn situation create different river situations. And suddenly, simple flop, we have two options on the flop bet or check. If the stacks are deeper, we could end up with 50 or 60 different river situations. And to get the EV on the flop, we have to define each one of those branches. Solver does that. That's why it takes so long for it to calculate preflop ranges because it calculates all the possible branches on the game tree and all the possible range versus ranges and that's why it takes a lot of time. But with old poker choose you couldn't do this. To, to get EV of a bet would take a lot of time with the old poker choose. And the biggest thing in Poker Choose Cloud is that you can do this three-way situation. So if he shoves, what is button calling range? Now the stacks are slightly bigger. We had 77 bit lines. But I'm I'm too lazy to change that. Let's assume they are 100. Uh, he would call with definitely hmm. with the not flush draw. He would definitely call with where's the two pairs. Would you call with any two pair? A two pair with open ender. And then I, I would say that I wouldn't be that surprised to see if he had top two pairs of ender. So with the queen check. With his brief up range, he always has some kind of additional equity. So he would probably just gamble here with everything. And then we would definitely call with anything. And now we can see 
that the call is very break even. How is that possible? Everyone else. No, the call is 107. No, 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 no. No. The EV of a call is here, 61, 65.07. And that's exactly our stack. Can it be exactly the same? Could it, could it be? I find that really weird. Why are expected stack? is exactly that. That's our equity share of the pot. Oh yeah, that's why. Oh yeah. So we have 80. And then when we bet here, all right, yeah. So we have to make the call, because if we fold, we would have Where's our stack size? Oh, there it is, 80. So once we bet we have only 18 in our stack, so of course we hit it in, but it's not a situation where we want to be. So we now have to create the game tree if this guy folds. Then button, let's just say that he plays Put or fold strategy. And he would shove here pretty much the same kind of stuff that we did. So he would shove not flush draw. And I will make my life easy and just give him two pair. Top two pair up better. And then, oh, we missed two pair with the flush draw. Should we add those? There. Let's add here. Oh, hey, thanks for subscription. Sub subscription. I don't have my headset, so I don't hear the beautiful music. So, two pair with the flash draw. Yeah. That guy would shove it too. So now I think we have finished the game tree. So now we can go back. Actions do not add up to 100. So if we raise. No, no, no. He, oh, I messed it up. I messed it up. Uh, he raises and he calls on. But why it doesn't add up? Weird. Do I really need to create the game tree for? Everything. This is something. Oh yeah, the Discord link is out. The problem is that I, I just can't keep it up. Because I... 
Well, even when I say that it's forever, it's not. It, it gets solved. So here's the new one. So that will work. For some reason, it doesn't work. So I really need to ask that. Let me actually make it so. Uh, mm -mm. Let's make it a shove. So it makes makes it a little easier. And why doesn't now we have that? So something is not right here in the branch. I would love if there was a feature where you could actually see the game tree, like the one you have with, with marker. Uh, you can see the tree. What if we pause this? Now we can see like there, this is the game tree that we have for the flop situation. And you can see that all of these are different outcomes only for the flop. The blue ones are for the turn, but the red ones are for the flop. So the, the tree gets pretty complicated. But I really hope that Focusers would have it, because now I'm wondering what part of the game tree am I missing? So if he calls, then we get to the flop. But if we check, all right, this is the part missing. So what happens if we check the flop? Um, we have SPR 1.2 or something, so I'm making simplifications. Uh, what I'm doing is I make it that he would bet 80. And the reason is that if I give him a pot size bet that he would bet 62, then I have to go through the game tree for the remaining 18 big lines. And if we call 62, we're going to go all in anyway. So I make it simplified for my, or simple for myself. I just say that he has definitely a shove range here. And I would say, let's make it once again a bit easier. We say he shoves, where's the two pair plus? Super plus, or actually, let's say that he bets two pair second highest two pair, and then he bets two pair with open ender, and then he bets two pair or flush draw. So, two pairs, Queen Jack Queen then sets and then to pair with any kind of draw. And then button would call pretty much, very simplified is two pairs. Where's the flush draw, where's the flush draw? Uh,
you would call with the nut flush draw and then he would call with uh, where's the straight draw with the flush draw there it is eight way with the flush draw all right <laughs> So two pair plus that includes the straights. So you can hear, you can see the range. It's two pair sets and nine eight king nine eight king. So it's two pair plus. It's made hand of two pair operator. And now I'm wondering, it's kind of so complicated, and I don't have the same tree drawn to anywhere. So I'm not sure if I missed something. My advice is that. As Sporkle Juice doesn't have the game tree option yet. I'm wondering if there's an app where you can actually create a decision tree. I actually saw one, an advertise on Facebook, and I thought that I don't need that one. But now I would need it. So in this kind of situation, it would be just nice just to draw the game tree to see do we actually miss anything. And we would always call here if that's the case. So actions do not add up to 100. So if if we check and he checks, we have a problem because we don't want to play the turn. And that's why why it gets so it gets so weird because we can calculate our flop checking EV unless we say that he shouts with everything. Because now I if we check this guy checks and button checks back, we have to define turn. To get the EV for our chip. Now let's say that a button shoves anything here. He's going to hit the board very often, so a simplification. So we really need to simplify life a lot. A lot. And once again, the actions do not add up to 100. Why it doesn't add up to 100? Well, here we can actually now see the EV. So now the EV came out. So if you're not following what has happened, don't worry, I'm not sure if I follow. But the thing is that on Poker Tools, we created the game tree. So we defined different ranges for different possibilities, how the game tree goes on. And with all the parameters we set, we can now choose whether we put or check. And if we put, the expected stack goes to 66. And if we check, our expected stack is 46. And it's weird because our stack is 80. And now it even assumes that if we check and here the cut of checks button would shove anything. And even then, it's minus EV. Because our expected stack should be over 80 to make it profitable. And one of the problem is that versus the ranges, we have only 28% equity. And I, I'm going to make it slightly wider so you can see our, our whole hand. So that's why I'm 
a bit curious that should we actually just check phone at this point? And another thing is that these two opponents don't have solver ranges. The range for them is that cut off. Oops, let's go back. Kind of raises 20% of hands. And button code calls 15% minus 6% three body range. So really tight range. And our raise on that specific flop is not good, but we definitely raise. And then Kind of calls everything but aces, button calls everything but aces. And then comes the flop, and we have only bad options. But betting is more easy than checking, which is super weird. And if we bet, we lose 15 BBs on average. If I understand the software correctly. Yeah. So I told you that I might be surprised second time today. And I was very confident that if we give them kind of ranges I would expect to see on the tables for stacking off and preflop, it would be marginally plus EV to just put the flop. But it, it also assumes now that if we bet, then his continuation range would be, um, he wouldn't have any flush draws in his range. So, if we change that he's going to call with any flush draw, which probably isn't too far, too far from the truth, and then we do the same for the button. So we change that they would only stack off with not fast draw, we change it that they would stack off with any fast draw. Then I think that it goes to being profitable to shove the flop. I would assume. But it doesn't. This, this would be a perfect time for some weird sound effect. Wow. Um, is any of you surprised that actually to shove this flop versus wide ranges, they call with any flush draw? I mean, now we define that either one of them would call with any flush draw. If he folds, this guy would roll with any flush draw, or it's raised to just get it in to make it easier. But still, it's minus EV to bet. Probably the reason is that. Would be nice if we had the range distribution implemented. We don't. 
but it would be nice because probably the reason is that especially in cut-off range, top 80, uh, top 20% of hands without aces and we're blocking kings, then he will hit queen jack then a million times. Well, not million times, he will hit that flop in these ways 61% of times. But when he does, do we need to add folding range here? Yes. We have 35% equity. So now we. Why it doesn't calculate this? What did I do wrong? Oh, yeah. All right, now, now it looks better. Wow, learning new stuff. So what I was missing was the option for button to fold. So if he shoves, I just added this fold opportunity here. And that changed the EV by 15 BBs almost. Wow. And it, it doesn't really matter what options we choose. We can see here that now the EV of a bet is expected stack is around 80 BBs, which is exactly as we have. And I, I always thought that even if I don't keep the option to fold, Bokujus would assume that everything rest is folded. Not going to answer that one yet. Uh, damn, damn, damn. Uh, I need to send a message that I will call. Go back in a bit. So I, I need to write it up for myself that we had this game tree where we shove or bet and cut off shoves. And then we had only the call opportunity for the button, which is 74% of his hands. We didn't have the option to fold. And now I created it and the EV just went up and I thought it wouldn't matter. So I have to ask the Pokerchus that wouldn't it assume that if we define calling range, then it would fold everything undefined. And everything else we have the options to fold. No. Okay, so now we get to the point where putting flop is break even. Checking is actually minus EV. We probably should just then check fold and not get in. Um what's wrong with my Oh, there's a hole in my shirt. What? On purpose. Wow. Um, the thing is that when you make calculations like I did, and then you get weird results, like you have this feeling that, is that right? Is my estimation so far away? Then you should double check everything. And especially with old poker shoes, it, it happened often that I missed something. And we just saw... Uh, I thought it wouldn't matter if the button doesn't have the folding option in a mode, but it did. And this went up from 65 to 80. So it, it's a very good 
reminder, very quick reminder for myself that, okay, there's things might have complicated three ways. And you can just imagine how complicated it would be if it was scenery race plot, and then we have different turns and rivers. So we would have to define all the possible game trees for the turn and river, but you can do it. It's just, it's so easy to make a mistake somewhere, but you can do it. That's I would, that's why I would love to have the game tree implemented. Like you would have a button where you press game tree and then you would see like this game tree is on the flop we have let's say that let's remove that one so we have the options to pot or check if we decide to pot then the opponent has option to fold or go all in two options if we check the flop uh, we don't use small sizings here then the next player has option to pot or check. If he checks, then the button has option to pot or check. And that's how the game tree goes on. And when you keep ranges for all the possible branches on the game tree, then you will get the results for the flop, like here. But it would be nice to have a button that shows the game tree actually and what kind of options there are, it would be easy to spot if we are missing something. So now I'm not that surprised anymore. Now the numbers look more what I expected. I thought that putting the flop cannot be horrible, but it's not super profitable either. And we can see that it's minus 0 0.12 Bitcoin, so virtually break even. And then if we decide to check and button shoves, um, and the cut of shoves and button calls, then we have option to call or fold. And we can see that folding gives us expected stack of 80. Of course, folding is always even zero, but calling gives us expected stack of 72, and our stack is 80, which means that it's minus uh, 7 BBs to call, and we should fold as Solver did, even when button's calling range is super wide. So, what we come up with the Poker 2's analyzing is that Solver was right, and I was wrong. Uh, betting is EV0, but it's minus 0 0.12. Checking is not profitable either, <laughs> but it seems that we stack up with a bit wider. So we should check if we had one shove And we didn't have folding option for bundle one. Where did the fold go? Oh man, do do we? Now we don't have the value for a chip. Why? Wow, we check fold. Eevee is only 72 versus his shoving range. So if he is putting range here or shoving range is tied, we should actually check fold this hand. <coughs> wow. Wow. Let's finish the game tree to see if it actually gives us the value for checking. 
just a second. All right. So now we finished up the cane tree. And the only reason why this is not perfect is that if we check and cut off checks, we define that button would shove everything. But he actually should shove everything because his stack is 80. And shoving everything gives him expected stack of 124. So actually he should shove everything most of uh, Is the proof of tree bed out of position a mixed play? Uh, heads up, it's different. It's a squeeze and uh, keeping 6-5 double suited is pretty much always a squeeze. I, I, can, I can check it up. Uh, just a second. I need to open up. Where is my marker? Let's open up the marker. I I actually have a bit limited preflop seems I have a five max. I have a five max sim and then I have a six max without uh, I mean, with 3 BB, 3% uh, uncapped rate, which was 4 million GG poker. So, uh, <coughs> we could use the 6 max. I mean, the difference is very minimal. Whether we have a 3% uh, uncapped range or 5% cap to something. So I'm, I'm going to load up the preflop sim just a second. Uh, if I remember right, it was pretty much most of the time a squeeze. So we have a UTG open, then cut off code call, and here with King King 65. So we can see that double suit 800%. There we go. So King Queen 6 5. Of course, now it's hearts and spades, but the preflop, it doesn't matter what the suits are, only the number of suits. So double suited, always a squeeze. And then rainbow, fold, single suited, pretty much just call. There's weird 12.5% fold, but I wouldn't do it. Make your life simple. But after we have created this game tree, we will see that our expect that or our stack at the moment is 80. If we bet with the assumptions we have, the stack in the end is 79, 78, we're doing the same. If we check 79, we're doing the same. So as I was saying that my initial thought is that it's very close. Should we put or, or check? And putting cannot be horrible, but it's not super profitable. Well, it's virtually EV zero to check or bet with these assumptions. And if we would like, we could keep them wider tree, uh, wider preflop ranges or wider flop ranges, tighter flop ranges. What happens if cutoff is a knit? who doesn't shove unless you have a really strong hand. What if he's acro who would shove any flush draw? What happens to our chip? So let's change that this guy would also shove any flush draw. Where's our flush draw? Any flush draw. And any two pairs. So let's make him an acro. What happens? Uh, 
to our bad EV and chip EV. Well, it doesn't really even change. So even if the cutoff is an acro, it doesn't change. So it's nice to know that the thinness or or how wide the ranges are cannot be a too big often deciding factor. Wow. Something happened with our Czech EV. Wow, 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 wow. Why? Something is missing on the game tree or it's not calculating it. All right, I might be wrong. Let's see that all the calculations are made. The wheels are turning. So now all the wheels stopped turning. We have equity everywhere. 79.78 versus 79.77. So we're doing the same. So in the end, Solver was right. I was a bit wrong. I was overestimating the value of a shove and underestimating the value of a jet. And that's what you can do with poker shoes. And I think the best learning experience is when you do both. And I, I have to say with this board, when I checked solver strategy, then I checked weighted solver strategy where we force opponents to have wider preflop ranges. And then I check with Pokertus Cloud, then I, I think there has been a lot of learning involved. I, I learned a lot that how much different things affect this situation. Because we have three different calculations. GDO, solver strategy versus wide ranges, and then with poker choose the estimated actual ranges, actual tendencies and frequencies. And then in the end we got the results and they are very close to my initial estimation that I would shove, but it's not printing money. It's very close to break even. But I wouldn't think that checking had that high EV after all, but it does. And it's always good when after calculations you see that what I initially thought is quite close. Then you can pat yourself in the shoulder then. That's a pretty good estimation. If my estimation would be that you should definitely put there because it's so much plus EV to just job. And now I see that damn it's very break evenish. Then I wouldn't pat myself on the shoulder. I would say that why did you expect that? Why did you estimate that way? What caused the error? And so on. So, oh, that took one hour. <laughs> one hour with one hand. Nice. But I love it. I like it. And what I love here also is the ability to make three way calculations with Pokerchus Cloud. Even very simple, because <laughs> without Pokerchus, like if you have just the equity calculator, it would be pain to go through that situation. And that's very simplified. It's pretty much shove or fold situation on the flop. But yeah, for multi-way situations, Poker Choose Cloud is a powerful tool. And it's the only multi-way tool besides Microsolver that you have. <laughs> and pretty much, uh, actually Microsolver, you can see that the seam here is three-way. And Monker doesn't care about your position. Monker doesn't care who was the brief of aggressor. What Monker does care is your brief of range. So every time when the flop is heads up, you have only two players, the seam would be button versus mole blind. But you define their ranges when you start up the seam. You give them like cutoff opening, I mean, UTC opening range and then button code coding range. Or UTC versus middle position then the small blind would be UTG button would be middle position. And you just define the range. Like here, the small blind 
has our three bit squeezing range. Beta line is actually the one with the UTG range, and button is actually the cutoff with code calling UTG proof of opening range. So if one is wondering why you have button and lines here when in the actual hand we had UTG cutoff and small blind. So that's why the positions are a bit different in both. All right, now I will let my brains to ease a little after all, all this thinking. I'm happy that I got conclusion on the hand. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check out Twitch and check out the order if you want to join. There's a new video every week. And actually it's September where you get discount of being sub. But I, I will come back to that. We have also a special promotion for all the subs going to play tournaments. Because I have tournament dollars or will have tournament dollars on on GT Poker. So I'm going to play tournaments with those. And for the subs, members of PL Order, there will be a possibility to buy shares with markup of less than one. So you actually get like you would get fifty dollar shares for only forty five dollars. The markup is 0 0.9 or 0 0.95, not sure yet, probably 0 0.9 to make up the fact that I was a bit absent on August. And then there will be some discounts on merchandise and everything. So it's like a relaunch of PLO order as soon as I can get everything set up and I will get those tournament dollars and I can build up the tournament schedule. So lots of things coming, you don't want to miss those. And probably tomorrow at this same time, more or less, trying to make just normal live stream with, with poker, playing poker. So it's not always this heavy stuff, but a little more fun. But yeah, I hope to see you tomorrow on a live stream. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks and bye bye.